try something. Max, are you listening? This next year, starting tonight, is going to be the year of getting to know us. Well, what do you mean, Mom? I mean, it'll be to a small extent a theme year. Nothing that's going to upset every day of our lives. But I thought in this next year, we'd all make an effort to get to know each other. Especially you, Leonard. Your dad and I are going to make an extra effort to get to know you. I don't know what you mean. All kinds of things, Max. We can go to movies together. Lenny can throw a party here at the house. And I personally would love to take a trip all of us together to the American Southwest. Sounds fun, Paul. And Max, you can take Lenny with you when you play golf, for example. Neither of us would enjoy it. Lenny needs to spend time with you. He never sees you. And a boy his age needs Mom, a right role here. model. Otherwise, he's going to continue getting I'm in trouble. I'm thinking caddy. In anticipation of our trip, maybe you could take them along with you on your Sunday rides. Mom, the Southwest is you. exactly like any other part of the country. Why do you always do that? You never want to do anything together as a family. Am I the only one who wants to keep this family together? Mom, I have community service anyways. Fine! I saw the both of you going in Henry's bar. That was with some friends, you know, and I saw you with your arm around her. It's fine, I won't say anything. You know the scheme to get to know each other better? I'm not so sure about that. You really don't need to get to know me. Why? Because one day, you're going to grow up, and you're going to be me. Paraphrase a great American patriot. I may not agree with a single word that Mr. Cusack has to say, but I will fight to my death to defend his right to say it. And in the end, isn't that what this case is really about? Freedom? Those precious rights, guaranteed in the Constitution to every American to express himself in thought, speech, and in action. Now, you've heard a lot of conflicting testimony here over the last few days. Maybe smoking is dangerous, but maybe it's not. And if it is dangerous, well then, so is flying in an airplane, skiing down a mountain, or even walking across the street. Each of us, every day, measures risks and makes decisions. And that's what Mr. Robinson did. Only he wants to have it both ways. He wants the freedom to do as he chooses, but he wants someone else to take responsibility if he doesn't like the outcome. Now, as much sympathy as we may feel for Mr. Robinson, that does not entitle him to seek out scapegoats and financial windfalls. Ladies and gentlemen, in furtherance of your oaths as jurors, I ask you to set aside your emotions and to draw that important distinction. I thank you.
I was thinking about what you said to me the other day about my painting. I stayed up half the night thinking about it, and then something occurred to me. I fell into a deep, peaceful sleep. And I haven't thought about you since. You know what occurred to me? You're just a boy. You don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. You've never been out of Boston. So, if I ask you about art, you can give me the skinny on any art book ever written. Michelangelo? You know a lot about him, I bet. Life's work, criticisms, political aspirations. But you couldn't tell me what it smells like in the Sistine Chapel. You've never stood there and looked up at that beautiful ceiling. If I asked you about women, you can give me a syllabus of personal favorites. And maybe you've been late a few times, too. But you couldn't tell me what it's like to wake up next to a woman and be truly happy. If I asked you about war, you could refer me to a bevy of fictional and non-fictional material. But you've never been in one. You've never held your best friend's head in your lap, watched as he drew his last breath, looking to you for help. If I asked you about love, I'd get a sonnet. But you've never looked at a woman and been truly vulnerable, knowing that someone could kill you with a look, someone could rescue you from grief, knowing that God had put an angel on earth just for you, and that you were her angel, to have the love be there for her forever, through anything, through cancer. And you wouldn't know about sleeping, sitting up in a hospital room for two months, holding your hand and not leaving because doctors could see in your eyes the expression visiting hours just didn't apply to you and you wouldn't know about real loss because that only occurs when you lose something you love more than yourself and you've never dared to love anything that much when I look at you I don't see an intelligent confident man I don't see a peer and I don't see my equal I see a boy no one could possibly understand you, right, Will? Yet you presume to know so much about me because of a painting you saw? And I don't buy the whole argument that you don't want to be here. Because I think you like all the attention you're getting. Personally, I don't care. Because there's nothing you could tell me that I can't read somewhere else. Unless we talk about your life. But you won't do that. Maybe you're afraid of what you might say. It's up to you. What the hell are you doing? What? An agent called in and, and you weren't here and I, I happened to be here and... He's dead. He's dead and it's all my fault. An agent? You answered? Wait. Archie, mate. Had a bit of a scare there, huh? Oh, sorry I had to ditch my gear. No worries, I made it out through the window, two floors straight down. Yeah, I told you I was good at my job. Got a bit of a busted leg, but hey, the queen and country, right? I'll see you when I'm in town. And by the way, tell that jackass Bernard that I've recommended his demotion to M. Take care. Double O. Hello? Yes, sir. What? No, sir. Yes, sir. Iceland. It sounds lovely, sir. I'll be ready immediately. Anquist Cave. Some memories, right, Lewis? Yes. Dark ones.
And Jashuri's back? This is roughly the place where Rachmanov stood when the three of us took him down. <laughs> Angelica, how I've been wanting to meet you. Wait. No, not yet. Don't move. Be very careful. Now, Angelica, what are you prepared to do? It's not going to work. Angelica. One less for me. It's not what you think. Blood magic. I learned a lot from my mother's diary. I am not yet through, Angelica. Peter. You were the one who pulled the trigger. Be very interested in seeing what you do next time. You know, that box hasn't been hold in forever. What's next? We're gonna have to go to hell to get my mom back. Here at Pat and Oscars, we're testing our new summer menu. Okay, why do people love our barbecue ribs meal for two? It's the St. Louis ribs smothered in barbecue sauce. No, no, it's the delicious small cheese pizza. Wait, it's the Greek or Caesar salad. It's the famous hand-rolled breadsticks. It's the price. It's only $17.99. $17.99? Listen, this isn't rocket science. It's just great food at a fantastic price. The Rib Lover's Combo Meal is only $17.99. So give it your own summer taste test at Pat and Oscars.
Dios. 